r slash credit ex-racists of reddit what made you change your mind my whole family is quite racist when i was little i was trying to wrap my head around the rules of the world so i thought it was as simple as different teams blacks vs whites was just like the red Sox vs the tigers then my grandmother starts going on about how horrible polish people are and how i'm never to talk to them so i'm psyched screw those polish people whatever color they are we are mortal enemies then she points out our polish neighbor to me but she's white i point out to my grandmother that she's white so we are on the same team my grandmother says no that she's a mixed breed i point out that my great granddad was a shoshone indian and that i'm a mixed breed she says that doesn't count that's when I realized she was just making up the rules and I wasn't going to play games with someone who couldn't stick to the rules. Sesame Street. I'm not even joking. Was raised in a slightly racist household in a pretty racist state. Seeing kids of all colors playing together made me wonder why my mom wouldn't let me play with certain people. It kind of snowballed from there. This is why diversity in media is important. It normalizes our perceptions of race. I was in grade 10, a young smart athletic black kid attending a private school on a basketball scholarship. There were probably 5 black kids total in the high school with around 152-200 kids in total. Majority white, the rest are sane and middle eastern. Out of the 5 black kids in total, 3 of us were on the basketball team, the other 2 were females also on the female basketball team. Did we ever get bullied by our own classmates? teammates, and even the teachers seemed to give us a harder time. After attending for 2 years, and leaving after my grade 11 year due to the stress, unfairness, and imbalance of diversity, I attended a public school my last year of high school, where there were over 1000 students of every race. Having a deep hate for others who didn't look like me after those 2 years, going to a public school, where everyone just saw you as the person you are, and not your outer shell, gave me some enlightenment, that racism is taught, not born with it in your blood. My mother told me, that I would see a huge change in culture, for the better, and that kids in public school come from different classes, low, middle and upper, and I've got to see white kids who were poorer than me, and white kids who were richer than me, as opposed to the private school where everyone's dad owned a Rolls Royce, not actually but you get what I mean. I grew a huge appreciate for every ethnicity and every culture, and realized that it's how you're raised, and how you're brought up through your role models. People that hide behind the white picket fence are narrow minded, and I feel truly sorry for them. I'm Asian and I grew up kind of resenting my parents for being different than my classmates parents and I hated that they didn't know how to speak English. I had to translate for them all the time, call phone companies, go to the DMV with them, translate documents, etc and I grew resentful. So when I was in elementary school I told them that I wasn't Korean but that I'm a full-fledged American, and I wasn't going to speak Korean anymore. I also hated interacting with other Asians, that reminded me of my parents. Aka textbook internalized racism. It wasn't until middle school, when I had a teacher, that validated my culture and actively tried to communicate with my parents that I realized, that bilingualism is an asset and something I should be proud of. Now I'm going into teaching, and have done some translating work on the side. People say my Korean is super fluent for an American born Korean and I really have my parent to thank for that. Now I'm super regretful for hurting them like that. My uncle used to be the most racist person I knew and it drove me crazy, but he is an old white man and set in my ways, is what he would say when confronted. It all changed the day his great granddaughter was born. His granddaughter had married a black man, and he was unaccepting until that baby was born. She had him wrapped around her pinky finger from her first breath. Since then there are several mixed children in the family. It's awesome to see the difference in his behavior. He genuinely loves them all, and accepts the racially different spouses of his grandchildren and their children. If he hears anyone being racist he shuts it down. College rumored was Muslim. Definitely was not a terrorist. Kinda already knew my paps was wrong about that, but when you live with someone for an entire year it takes you from kinda already knew to holy crap that way of thinking is screwed up. I never made the choice really to be racist, but I grew up in South Mississippi and my family wasn't overtly racist, but they were the kind 
to say racist things behind closed doors and didn't allow us to watch TV shows such as The Cosby Show or Fresh Prince and definitely no rap music in the house. I absolutely fell in love with a lot of black artists in the early 90s. I loved the hip hop scene at the time and holy shit Fresh Prince was the best sitcom on television. I played football with 80% black guys and worked at Popeye's Chicken with over half the staff being black. I guess you can say my own real world exposure despite their attempt to shelter me changed me. I cringe at some of the vernacular I used in my early youth as the n word was the same as black in my house. I literally was not raised to know that was a bad word. I'm glad that from the age of maybe 12 on I learned to love all people on my own. I went away to college. I was a kid in a racist family. N-bombs were thrown around the dinner table regularly. I had really only met a few African Americans in my whole life. I was also the first in my family to go to college, other than my brother to seminary for the cult my family is in which I don't count. My friend Richard was my first black friend. I think he only liked me at first because he had a crush on my friend Amy and she would always be at my parties. But we ended up friends for 4 years. I'm naturally sort of empathetic and I'm good at putting myself in others shoes. It just sort of dawned on me very early on that I wouldn't speak or act that way if he was around. So I just decided I should never act that way. It took me a little while to forgive myself for being garbage. But I was a kid and literally didn't know any better. Oh yeah. And I fired my shitty family. I haven't talked to Rich in over 20 years. I moved 3000 miles away after college, and as you might expect from his name, it is basically impossible to google him. If you are out there rich, thanks. Was raised in a racist and closed community. When I joined the army and met different people, no lives matter, you are all equally worthless, drill sergeants. A guy I worked with said he was near Nazi as a teenager and ended up in prison somehow. He hated Jews for some reason and blacks. He was never clear on why, just that he had so much hatred in his heart, and that was his outlet. He was in prison for many years. I think he almost killed somebody by beating them up. So, many years later, and in prison there was a mentor type staff there, and this one lady was so helpful to him, and she cared about him so much that it really started to get into his head the idea of being a positive person. Then, he learned that she was Jewish, and he said he couldn't believe she was so kind and caring despite the fact he was acclaimed neo-Nazi. From that day he swore to be a better person, he learned his lesson. He's a pretty great guy these days, doing his family thing and making sure his son grows up with lots of love and all that he didn't have. Really remarkable great guy. My grandma grew up in Virginia in the 1900s. Being racist is just the default setting. Nana loved her family more than anything, though. So at one point in the late 1980s, she met her first not 100% white grandkid and discovered she still loved him. She made astounding late life progress accepting that darker skin toned people were not only people, but family, friends and welcome in her house. I wasn't actively racist when young, but my surroundings did affect me. I never once considered myself racist until I started noticing that at times I would look at a black person and think they are lucky for living in my country, Caucasian majority. This made me start to question myself. Why was I having those thoughts? I guess I had just been subliminally raised that way. You see someone dirty you think ugh, take a shower, you see someone black you think ugh, go back to where you came from. Only after realizing this did I start to actively try to rewire my brain, so to say. Glad those times are way beyond me now. Not myself, but many former racist, or at least, now less racist, friends of mine were able to have their minds changed just by simple exposure, especially to non-whites, that didn't fit the stereotype. At first, it starts that they are just one of the good ones. But after a while, when they meet enough good ones, they start to realize that the good outnumber the bad in their racial worldview starts to crack. Doesn't work on them all, though. Some are racists due to education and esteem issues. But many are racists simply from lack of exposure to other races, only having what the media slash environment they live in tell them to fill in that gap. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe to reddit for more stories.